Wake up! We need to move. What's going on? Everyone, wake up! You need to get out of here. Who the fuck are you? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you can't stay here any longer. She asks a question, and I suggest answering. You don't want to do that. I've got this place rigged with explosives, and there's a detonator in my pocket. You got what? Do you mind? Lower your gun, Ryan. He's the one that saved my life. What do you want from us? You have to get out of here. Skynet's on its way. They finally found you. What do you mean, they found us? They were looking for us? Not for you. For him. He's essential to winning this war. Skynet knows that. That's why they've been following him for months. I have to make sure nothing happens to him. In a couple of minutes, an infiltrator will walk in here trying to kill him. I can't let that happen. We have to bury that Terminator here once and for all. All right, everybody, you heard him. Let's get moving. I'll get the bus ready. There's no time for that. There's a passage here. It will lead you out. Use it. <gasps> what was that? All right, everyone, get out! Jacob! Give me that. It's the same one. It's the same model. Leave! Now! How the hell's he still alive? Go! 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 Watch out! Don't just stand there! Run! Baron listened to us. She could no longer deny that this infiltrator was a real threat. She decided to take everyone in, on her terms. The shelter was on high alert, but thanks to the intel I gathered in Pasadena, we slowed the advance of the Annihilation Line and gained some time. Just enough to start preparing the counterattack. Sergeant? At ease. Well, look at you, Sergeant. When you helped us in Pasadena the other day, I was trying really hard not to panic because you were only a private. Sorry for underestimating you. I guess I should salute or something? How's Patrick? Every day a little better. Aaron says he'll be back on his feet in no time. She's done a great job with him. I wish I could repay her somehow. It just doesn't seem that she needs anything. Getting ready for another scavenging run? No, I just came out here to catch my breath. Baron is giving us the entire evening off, believe it or not. Doesn't sound like her. I need to report to Baron. Rivers, DN 46890. 
The commander is expecting you in the control room, Sergeant. Maraschino cherries again. Where do they keep finding this shit? I don't get it. How did they bring that buggy down? Hey, I'm just catching up with Mark. I'll get back to work in a couple of minutes. You won't tell, right? <laughs> uh, but, but no, seriously, you won't tell, right? <coughs> I'm going out soon. I haven't made my daily quota yet. I still have three more rats to catch. If you see one, let me know, okay? Anything. Can I see your hardware?
need any. Can I see your heart? Hey, Ryan. How's everything? Uh, exactly as you would imagine. Baron's keeping me busy. They weren't kidding when they said she's a hard ass. What did you hear? A lot of rumors going around of how she's sending insubordinate workers to the front line. And by insubordinate, I mean people who ain't willing to work 18 hours a day. Every day. What happened after you started your camp? Honestly, nah, not that much. At least not in the beginning. When we gave up on the idea of getting in touch with anyone, we just tried to adapt. Temperatures fell, we had to scavenge for food. All of a sudden, that became our life. Didn't you try to reach home? Some people did. Most of us were scared of what we'd find if we did get home. So we conveniently said, we are stranded here anyways and stayed. Well, I know how stupid it sounds, but we managed to have fun in our little commune. I still had my guitar with me. We talked a lot about how we're gonna be famous, because we're the only living band in the world. You played in a band? I did. One of the few things I was better at than Tucker. He didn't have much talent, but he loved the idea of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Especially the first two. We were just stupid kids, not realizing what was going on. We paid the price for it the first time we saw a tin can. I was tuning my guitar when I heard a strange noise. I found out later that it was a T-400. Must have heard me play. It didn't even have the decency to look scary. Maybe if it did, we wouldn't have just stood there when it started firing. What did you do? I froze. I didn't run to help. I didn't scream. I didn't even move. I just stood there, like a coward. A tin can got Tucker with a single bullet. Bam! Just like that. Seven other people died before we finally destroyed that thing. Ironically enough, I was the one who delivered the final blow. Safe to say, it was the beginning of a new era. Are you all right? Me? Honey, I'm about the most well-adjusted person in this goddamn place. It's the others you should be concerned about. Is there anything you need? No. I have to say, the Resistance is pretty well supplied. Don't tell me you miss running errands for me. I don't believe that for a second. And what about something other than medicine? Honey, I'm not shy. I'll let you know if I need anything, okay? But thank you for asking. You mean Ryan? Ryan ain't so hot either, but that's another story. Jennifer? <laughs> I'm worried about her. I'm the one that asked Baron to give her team a little break. 
Jennifer's been busy scavenging supplies for the soldiers, and she hardly had time to see Patrick. And now she's finally got a day off. She's avoiding him like the plague. How's Patrick doing? He's fine, but it wouldn't kill you if you checked on him yourself. Take care. How are you doing? Good. Aaron's going to let me leave in a couple of days. Thanks for bringing that chalk. I've been drawing a lot. I'd be so bored without it. How do you like living in the shelter? There's a lot of people here. I like that. I heard a funny joke yesterday. You want to hear it? Yeah, tell me. What's brown and sticky? A stick. <laughs> That's funny. I know, right? How's Jennifer? She's out a lot, but I understand. She's a scavenger. I have to go. Spider Scout again. Man, I saw it crawling through the shelter earlier. Almost gave me a heart attack. You wanted to see me. You're finally here. Good. I have a special task for you. I want you to head downtown to check on the doctor. Doctor? Alvin. He's out there making sure that our defense systems are working properly. Ever since we went radio silent, I had a small team of trustworthy messengers maintaining communication between our outposts. They haven't returned. So I want you to go downtown and see why that happened. Could be nothing. But Connor doesn't want any hiccups while he's up there in North Division preparing the attack on Skynet's central core. Is there a problem with the radio? The Annihilation Line is within spitting distance of downtown. We suspect that Skynet will be intercepting all transmissions from that location. So for now we're going radio silent. That's why I need you to go there personally. Central core? Skynet's main reactor. The source of all their power. We shut down the central core, we shut down Skynet. Connor's preparing the attack as we speak. So you understand we can't have any critical complications at this stage. If you don't mind me asking, how did you end up here? Excuse me if I act a little surprised, Sergeant. But no one in here thinks it's wise to ask their superior personal questions. But since you did, I'll humor you. So. How did I get here? The same way you did. I was born, raised, then given a gun. We don't really have a say in what we do, do we? Or do I assume too much? Was it any different for you? Hmm? Why do you fight, Sergeant? We don't have a choice. Exactly. We're just going through the motions. Humans were fighting humans since the beginning of time. It just so happens that right now we have a common enemy. If it wasn't for the machines, we'd probably be fighting each other. If that's how you view humanity, are we even worth fighting for? I'm just doing whatever it takes to survive. Saving humanity is just a bonus. Besides, I'm not a fighter. 
When I go out there in the middle of the night with my Westinghouse, I'm not looking for a fight. I look to seek and conquer. I'm not a fighter. I'm a bully. <laughs> What's the difference? I don't treat them as equals. And although I know they're just machines, I want them to fear me. No one ever stands up to bullies. But I have to admit, it has its downsides. One of them being that no one ever asks me a personal question. At least not since Perry died. So congratulations, Rivers. It takes guts to stand up to a bully. I guess since your promotion, you got a little more cocky. Good for you. We need a medic over here! I'm telling you, I saw something. What's happening, Private? A couple of aerials flew in and dropped containers full of metals. They started shooting while our defense systems did nothing. What about the doctor? Where's Alvin? He's still out there. All right. There's one more thing. Before I got hit and dragged here, I saw something. I'm not sure, but... I think it was one of our own soldiers that led Skynet's attack. Sergeant, we're outnumbered, and they keep bringing more wounded. We don't stand a chance. We have to evacuate. Is Alvin still there? He is, sir. Then we're not leaving. We have to bring him back and see what the hell is going on with those defenses, and brief Commander Baron on what's happening here. I'm moving out. You stay here with the wounded. You want me to break the radio silence? At this point, it doesn't matter, does it? Understood. Go ahead, sir. You two follow me. We have to reach those defense systems. Yes, sir. Spiders up ahead. Got it. Lead the way. What's the status? We've got a defensive down the road. Doesn't seem to be working. Now they're between a rock and a hard place. Alright, we need to reach our guys. Let's clear the way.
before it reboots! Rocket! Look for grenades! It won't fucking die! Finally! This way! It's just beyond that overpass! We need to rescue the dock before those tanks reach us! The dock's in danger! Get up that hill! Oh shit! We're too late! They're already here!
clear! Wait here! I'll go get the doctor! Alvin! Oh my god! I'm actually glad to see you! What happened here? Why are the defense systems not working? They are working, but their target filtering has been reset to non-hostile. One of Baron's messengers came with the order to temporarily change it, so I did! Baron's messengers... We need to leave now! Yes, let's do that. I'm all for that. Are you alright? We need to move! You don't have to tell me twice! Escort secured! Ah! Go! I don't like this! I don't like any of this! Ariel! Okay, go! It's turning around! It's right behind us! Don't look back! Good idea! You go talk to Commander Baron. I've had enough excitement for one day. Lay still. Don't move. Thanks for getting us out of there, Sergeant. What's up? I know you're busy, but I found something. Something I think you'll like. A tape from back in the day. I want to play it for you, but my boombox is busted. So uh, if you're out there and find one that works, bring it to me, okay? Can't you ask Jennifer or one of the other scavengers for help? I already did, but they couldn't find anything. Just think about it, okay? I wasn't expecting to find you here. You always seem to be out these days. Yeah, that's true. Lately, I've been making extra runs to stock up on resources. Truth is, I was even thinking about leaving. But right now, I'm just waiting for my team to head back to downtown to look for other survivors. Let's hope there still are some. I see that Patrick's doing better. He is. He's a fighter. Certainly has more courage than I do. Why did you want to leave? In the face of what's going on now, it will sound stupid, but... It just got to be a bit much, you know? With Patrick Hurd, I start to wonder if I'm even doing him any good by sticking around. I've been trying to protect him all this time, but I couldn't. <clears throat> I've proven that much already. First in Pasadena, then at our hideout. I was thinking that maybe he'd be safer here at the shelter. But don't worry, I changed my mind since. Is there something on your mind? Actually, I have a secret to tell you. You've a fan. Patrick really looks up to you. It's good for him to have a role model. And I don't think he could have chosen better. I don't think I'd make for a good role model. I never knew Jacob Rivers could be so coy. Be proud, you're a hero. The Resistance owes you a lot. And so do I. 
If you hadn't found us back in Pasadena, I don't know what would have happened. Well, actually I do. Exactly what the others said would happen. People were talking about the Annihilation Line months before it came. My father, of course, tried to turn it all into a joke. But what did you think about it? I didn't know what to think. Travelers would bring all sorts of gossip with them. But this kept coming back. When Patrick asked me if I was scared, I lied and said that I wasn't. You could feel the mood change at the house. The community my father tried to build started falling apart. Fewer and fewer people were coming by. And if they did, they weren't always friendly. We started to notice things going missing. Little things at first. People got nervous. And with time, it even got to my father. What do you mean? Well, for one thing, he stopped making jokes. It had never been as quiet at the house as it had been back then. After a while, my father changed the sign from welcome to beware. He put a lock on the door. He started carrying a shotgun. I didn't even know he owned a gun. He always said he didn't believe in them. He wanted us to leave our house and run, but he didn't want to listen. Said it was the only place he could keep us safe. Thanks for letting me spill my guts like that. Are you all right? We just got the news about the attack. They're getting closer, aren't they? Hey, <laughs> glad to see you alive. And thanks for sticking your neck out for us. I wanted to tell you that, you know, just in case.
Did you talk to her? I is she mad at me? If I follow her orders, then I'm a bad guy. If I don't follow her orders, then I'm a lousy, incompetent egghead without a spine. There's no winning with her! Jacob. How are the wounded doing? The few that came back, they're doing fine. We patched them up, and at this point we're just sitting and waiting. What's in your mind? Ever since you asked me about Peter, I can't stop thinking about him. Like a teenage girl. <laughs> That's your fault, young man. Have you tried looking for him? I've looked for him for a while. I went to the place where we said we'd meet if we ever got separated. But he wasn't there. Maybe it's stupid. Maybe I should stop thinking about him. He's... he's probably dead by now. God knows he can't take care of himself. Do you want to find him? Sometimes I think I should drop everything and go. I would get an earful from Baron, but she's nothing I can't handle. Anyway, what I didn't tell you before is that during Judgment Day, I lost a child. Our child. I don't know if it would have happened anyway, but I like to blame the machines for that. I think that Peter felt with Taylor we were given a second chance. God, he's still out there waiting for me, isn't he? Probably sitting in his rocking chair back in our house in Hollywood Hills. Oh, where the hell are you, Peter? Rivers, you want to explain to me what the hell happened? We lost downtown. I know that much. But how's that possible? What happened to our defense systems? Alvin says one of our soldiers came with an order directly from you to reset the target settings for non-lethals. He said what? Ah, all right. This is what I want you to do. Find whoever is responsible for sending that order. All the messengers have GPS tracking, so we're keeping tabs on their location. Find them and bring them to me. Understood. And Rivers, despite what I might say about our resident egghead, I truly have a hard time believing that my men are incompetent. So expect the unexpected. And you know what I mean by that. Do you think the infiltrator's back? We won't be sure until you find those messengers and confirm my suspicion. Now that you mention it... What? One of our soldiers said that it looked as if one of our guys led Skynet's attack. That only supports my case. 
As soon as you know what's going on, radio me. Who's Perry? You mentioned him before. The best soldier I ever fought beside. He was the one who brought me into the Resistance. <laughs> it's actually a funny story. Years ago, when I was just a kid, I saw a Skynet drone attacking some guy. Without thinking, I grabbed a rock and jumped on it. The guy was screaming the whole time while I beat the metal to the ground. Only when I was done did I realize he was trying to stop me. You killed a drone with a rock? Uh, I was young and stupid. Thank God the drone wasn't really armed, otherwise I wouldn't be here to tell you the story. He was a resistance scientist, and that drone was one of his projects. So you can imagine he wasn't too happy when I smashed it to pieces. But he wasn't alone. There was this huge guy with a rifle on his shoulder, almost choking with laughter. I sure made his day. That huge guy? Was that Perry? Yes, it was. Commander Perry was in charge of this division before me. That scientist later told me that was the first time he ever heard Perry laugh. Somehow, Perry and I connected. He taught me how to channel my anger and get it under control. He introduced me to Connor, and that's how I got to the 132nd. Whatever happened to the scientist? He was always doing his experiments, trying to outsmart Skynet. One day he fucked up, and because of that he's no longer with us. I'd never thought I'd be reminiscing about the day I met them. This may come as a surprise to you, but it was the first medal I ever destroyed. Sounds like you were late in joining the Destroy Skynet campaign. Before that it was people, not machines. But that's a different story. You want me to break radio silence? They have a head start on us. At this point, we can't afford to lose any time. 